school days are, they say, the very best days of your life. And our next story takes us to a rather special school near Lucan in West Dublin. I say special because it has had the reputation in the past of being a rather posh, private Church of Ireland school. It started out as a school for the poor over three centuries ago, but has gone on to open its doors to everyone and to members of all faiths and none. It's also the alma mater of our Taoiseach, Leo Varadkar. Recently, I visited the King's Hospital School. There's a great buzz about the place here at the King's Hospital School as everyone is involved in the evening gala, which is part of the ongoing celebrations for this, the school's 350th year, which makes King's Hospital one of the oldest schools in Ireland. And that's our next scene, and our segue in. Okay, right. off you go. Ah, Dr. Swift, how can you come? We are honoured by your presence. I've entered this degree. The honour is the school. That the Dean Reverend of St. Patrick would condescend to join the board is a great distinction. The one that distinguishes the giants from the people. Cut. At rehearsals for the gala evening, I caught up with one past pupil who will be playing a leading role. Before you started to play Jonathan Swift for the school production here, did you know anything about him? And not really, just, just that he was a governor of the school and he was also a writer and he wrote Gulliver's Travels. Um, and uh, I'd heard that he was an uncle of Taylor Swift, but that's not true. <laughs> I trust it was not the only measurement of the pupils at Simon. And were you academic? Were you a very um, good student? Uh, I was probably one of the most diligent students and won a student of the year six years in a row. <laughs> That's fake news. <laughs> I don't believe you one bit. <laughs> King's Hospital has an unusual history and it all began in 1669. The people in Ireland appealed to King Charles II of England to support the opening of a hospital and school for its impoverished children. And King Charles II gave the King's Hospital School its charter. The charter is basically what the school is and why it was founded. And the main aspect of this, the charter, would be that it was for the good education and the instruction for the youth. So they would have participated in, in apprenticeships and they would have learned from masters of the trade at the time. And an example of some of them would be a brewer, a carver and a chocolate maker. And we have one fan maker. King's Hospital, known as a blue coat school. Now, what is a blue coat school? So, a blue coat school is a charitable organisation, and the pupils that were in this charitable organisation, they had to wear long blue coats. So, it derives from that history. Exactly. The school started its life in Blackall Place in Dublin. And in the 1970s, it moved out to a new campus at Palmerstown. So what's boarding school life like for some of its younger students? It's a bit strange because you're coming from your primary school when you're one of the tallest and then back into secondary school when you're walking up to the huge six years and they're just looking down to you. Well, the ups are um, that you're with your friends the whole time. You never really get lonely. And then if you get bored, you just go outside, play rugby or stay in here, play cards or anything like that. And are there any downsides to sharing uh, <coughs> dormitory with other boys? Well, it gets a bit stinky in the dorm sometimes, especially like after sport when everyone's just like all smelly. But King's Hospital pupils have not always faced as bright a future as its current students. The world wars caused huge traumas for the school as so many past pupils were lost. We have an admission form here from a past pupil who died in World War I. His name was Reginald Bilas and his father died in 1888, so when he was three. And it says here that he applied for the school because the inability of the mother to pay for the two boys for them to attend education. It's very sad. 
So this would have been very much when King's Hospital was very much in its mold as a charitable organisation. Correct. This is a picture of him when he was a junior officer and he died in 1918 when he was shot by a machine gun. When King's Hospital emerged from World War I, it was to a new Ireland with new challenges. Since then, the school has continued to grow and now has 700 pupils, all who need to be fed as well as taught. We have boarders and day students and we churn out about a thousand meals a day. That's 160,000 main meals in a, in a school year. So uh, it's a military operation. What would you like? Beef. Okay. Oops. Okay, sorry about that. It's very important that we have that personal interaction with all the students in the school. At the end of the day, um, for a lot of them, it is their home away from home for maybe 30 weeks of the year. So it's not just we're serving away, we need to talk to them all the time. And that's the expectation of the school as well. The school is celebrating 350 years. For it to do that, it must have been able to develop, adapt and evolve. It has evolved and it has changed. And uh, I suppose it has embraced all of the changes at significant points throughout its history. For example, with the formation of the state, we would have had to have discussed certain tensions that existed, whether they were political or cultural. I mean, the Irish language, my own subject, only became part of the curriculum in the 20s. And so by the mid-30s, the school had fully embraced Irish. It had a thriving uh, Gaelic society. And uh, the minutes held in the archives would have reflected that a lot of boys uh, enjoyed learning Irish and participated. I think this would have influenced undoubtedly a number of our past pupils. Richard Giltrap, for example, became the principal of Colossia Movi. And I suppose Jack Boovman, president of a GAA, is also a past pupil. And can you sum up for me the, the school's ethos? The school's ethos is a Church of Ireland ethos. Everybody is welcome, whether you're from the Church of Ireland, from a different denomination like myself, or from a background of no denomination. The doors are open and everybody is welcome. Sport has always been an important part of school life here. One of the parts of history that really interests me is the hockey part and it really interests me because our school was the first school in Ireland to play hockey and I'm just really proud of my school for doing something so amazing like this. We give you thanks, O Lord, for 350 years of the school's history, its worship, and its coming together as a community in prayer and friendship. Great importance is placed on tradition, and every morning the school assembles for matins, often with the King's Hospital Choir. Lara, tell me, was the choir uh, a factor in coming here? Oh, definitely. I think anybody who likes to do singing or music or anything related to that will definitely love being a part of the choir. It's very inclusive. You always feel very welcome. And it's a really good outlet for singing and getting to sing with older years and getting to meet new people. King's Hospital has certainly evolved from a blue coat charity school to one that holds its own in the very competitive league of Ireland's private schools. And I wondered what most impresses its recently appointed headmaster, Mark Ronan. What attracted me to the King's Hospital was its commitment to inclusivity uh, and diversity because I think it's really important uh, for the young people that we educate that they uh, learn to work with others uh, regardless of background 
uh, and uh, ethnicity and sexuality. The school in the past has been in the news for all the wrong reasons. Before your time, it has to be said, what are your thoughts about that and how can you ensure total child protection here? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think it's important uh, for any uh, school that one recognises uh, those uh, times in your history when uh, things were not good and we must learn and not ignore but it is also important for the children in our care that we that as a head coming in now that we move forward learning from that i am absolutely committed my primary responsibility is uh, the safeguarding and well-being of both young people and the adults both teachers and support staff who work within the community the school has changed so much since the 17th century, as Ireland has. I was curious to find out what life is like for the older students and what interests and responsibilities they have. Royal, you're a sixth year and you are a prefect. Now that sounds like a pretty serious kind of job, but uh, what does it entail? Um, well, being a prefect in KH is kind of like, it's really important in terms of the running of the place and how everything operates. But um, I think it's probably more of a policing role, which is the difference between being a prefect and a mentor. They're probably more to do with them um, buddying up with the younger years and making sure that they're okay as they get older and stuff through school. Chiara, you're a mentor. So what does that entail on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I'm a mentor and that's very much a pastoral role. So we would be kind of, as Royale said, a buddy to the first years and to other new students that are coming in. You're particularly interested in sport, aren't you, Ben? I, uh, well, I would enjoy my rugby. I have been very interested in it since a young age. And the school, like, it offers you everything, you know, to enhance your rugby skills. Like, and if what do people say to you, people who aren't boarders here, uh, friends from home, when you say you're boarding at school? Um, usually they say to me, um, what did you do to get sent away to boarding school? But um, I absolutely love it. Florence, what do you reckon is uh, where you have an advantage over people who might be day pupils? Well, in boarding in sixth year, you have your schedule kind of laid out for you and you stick to it. So it, the balance comes with that. Whereas if you're at home, a day pupil, you might be getting stuck into the books and you might not be able to lift the head and you wouldn't get the other things in. Well, back at rehearsals, it's going well for the gala evening, which is coming up at the end of March. One of many such celebrations in this, the school's 350th year. And we really had a lovely time among the staff and students at the King's Hospital. And best of luck and congratulations as they celebrate 350 years. Well, we've come to the end of this evening's Nationwide. Thanks indeed for watching. We're back again on Monday. And in the meantime, enjoy the weekend.